Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing Heekin 58 in the five minute pool on ICC. I'm opening with d4. He plays knight f6. Let's play the usual stuff, c4. And King's Indian or Grunfeld? Okay, Grunfeld it is. Uh, hmm. Let's take and play bishop d2. So this used to have sideline status, but has since become somewhat popular. I would say it's in like the second tier, tier category as far as weapons against the Grunfeld. But it's all right for white. You get playable positions. I think knight b6 is, in fact, the better move uh, right around there. Um, retreating the knight instead of taking on c3 on move 6. Okay, I'll play... Hmm. Bishop e2 or knight f3. See, he's not playing c5 so early. If knight f3, I'm just a little worried he's going to play bishop g4. So, hmm. Might be a silly concern, though. Knight f3, bishop g4... Then he's starting to take f3 and d4 might be a liability. Okay, let's play bishop e2 first. So we'll just develop, kind of hedge against the bishop g4 move. c6 seems passive. All right, I'm going to go h3 and then follow with knight f3. Maybe he'll try to arrange e5. He needs to break in the center or somehow combat my d4, e4 pawn duos in the future. Otherwise, he's probably going to get a passive position. Maybe bishop e6. Okay, so c4 is a bit of a weak spot. Overall, I think I'm doing well, though. Let's just play queen c2. Get ready for rook fd1. I can think about playing b3 if I want to keep a piece out of c4. But for the moment, I don't think it's mandatory. Okay, rook fd1. If rook ac1, bishop takes a2, I have b3. So no need to worry there. Let's just do it. I'm happy with our position. We've got a good center, probably a slight advantage. Black looks solid, but I think he's a bit worse. I could play bishop a5 if I want to make life miserable for him in the middle. Yeah, let's do that. So tie this knight down. And even if he moves the queen, he can't... Move the knight after that because the rook hangs behind it. Queen f4. I could go back bishop d2. But he'd probably come to c7 or b8. Hmm. Let's just play b3. Overprotect the c4 square. Make sure bishop takes a2. Cannot be played in the future. We have d4 and e4 guarded. So I'm not concerned about that. It's a little awkward for him to unwind. I may look to play bishop d2 in the future. Like if he played rook d6, that would be a horrible blunder at the moment, because bishop d2, queen f6 is his only safe square for the queen, and then bishop g5 wins that piece. I'm not expecting rook d6, but that illustrates some of the problems he has with coordination at the moment. h6, that seems weird. I'm just going to play a4, maybe with the plan of playing bishop d2 followed by a5. Chase that knight away. F5. Radical. Okay, so bishop d2, queen takes e4. So that's what he was up to with g6. Or, no, h6. But he could have played f5 on the previous move if he wanted to. So maybe he didn't have that in mind. Okay, but if I play e5 now, his queen is looking awkward. Okay, let's do that. I know I give up control of d5 in playing this way. But isn't his queen getting trapped? Bishop d2, and he just took away the escape route. Bishop d2, queen e4, bishop d3. Yeah, and that queen has nowhere to go. Yep, that's just a queen trap. g5, g4, h4 are all covered. e4 is the only square, and then bishop d3. Bye-bye, black queen. He could play like bishop takes b3 after that, but that's not going to save him. I win a piece in that line. So that is the reason why f5 was risky, because after e5, um, 
he had to see this bishop d2 resource. It's so easy to miss like backward moves, so I'm not completely surprised that he overlooked that. Backward piece moves are difficult moves to find often in chess. So I think relatively best for him now is queen e4, bishop d3, bishop takes b3 check. Or not, not check. I could take on b3 check on black's king, but then he could play queen d5. So I'm expecting that. I think I'll just take on e4 if he does it, though. It's probably the easiest way to handle this position. And then we take here, and we're up a piece. We're also guarding a4, too. So he only gets one pawn for it. Bishop b3 check is coming. Nothing for him. Okay, let's just go here. Put our bishop on a useful diagonal. Maybe bishop e6 in the future. Plays g5, but that blunders this. Attacking the rook, attacking f5. Check. Take that guy. Hmm. I could go bishop a5 again. Let's do that. Completely tie him down once more. Yeah, now this rook can't move at all. Can't go to d7 or c8. He just resigned. Okay, let's have a quick look at that one. So we had a Grunfeld, and like I said, I mean, bishop d2 is not a theoretically critical move. It's just a playable alternative against the Grunfeld. I've kind of revealed my strategy against the Grunfeld in past videos, and I just switch around weapons a little bit because I don't think any one uh, line is particularly good against this opening. Um, it's one of the best defenses to d4 in. If you know a line that works really well, definitely let me know, because I don't. <laughs> so I just have like three or four weapons that I kind of cycle in and out, and I'm always looking for new stuff to play. And the idea of bishop d2 is to, after e4, and he takes here, to take with the bishop. You know, usually white takes with the pawn, but taking with the bishop might allow you to po oppose black's bishop on this long diagonal. So that's why I like it. Uh, but like I was saying, I think knight b6 is a more challenging move at this juncture. Because then he's hitting d4 twice with the bishop and the queen. White usually goes bishop e3, and black can bring about nice pressure on d4 with moves like knight c6 in the future. Uh, pretty standard standard practice for a Grunfeld. But as played, take, take, castles. And here I debated a little bit. I didn't want to play knight f3 right away, even though that's just a normal developing move. Because I thought he might go bishop g4 with the threat of taking, and I would be unable to take with a queen because a bishop takes d4. So I probably spent a little bit too long playing bishop e2. Bishop c4 is a, an alternative as well. Maybe bishop c4 and try to develop the knight through e2, whereupon bishop g4 could be met by f3. So that was a possibility. But I just played bishop e2, prophylaxis against the bishop g4 move. I don't like this passive approach by black. I really think they should be going for c5. Even now, c5 would be fine, because it's not like I'm going to take and try to win a pawn. In that case, he can... Check. Take d4 followed by queen a5, hitting c5 and c3, and he'll get the pawn back, probably with a better position. So I would not have done that. So c6 seems a little limiting. I played h3. Yeah, and I figure white must be somewhat better. Maybe he should have put a piece in on c4, most likely the bishop, and try to trade, because he was cramped in the upcoming position, and the best way to relieve a cramped position is try to trade pieces. Uh, less pieces on the board, less pieces you have to get in the way of your uh, coordination. So maybe he should have done that. Instead, queen c7, and I just centralized my rooks. If he takes on a2, I would play b3, as I mentioned, and his, and his bishop is trapped. So he played rook a c8, and then I went bishop a5, um, more so to annoy him than anything else. I know from experience in this structure that a bishop coming to a5 can stall uh, the queenside play for black for many moves because he has to extricate himself from this pin. Let's just put the engine on right now and see what it says. Yeah, I mean, b3 is also reasonable. Just take control of the c4 square. Bishop a5. Ah, he could play bishop h h6. That's a move I often miss, actually. Bishop h6 in particular, hitting a rook on c1. It's kind of sneaky. It's like a move towards the side of the board where there isn't much action taking place. But uh, if he played that, I would have to move my rook or bring the bishop back to d2. I guess rook a1 or rook b1 is not the end of the world, but but still. Instead, though, he played queen f4, and I just played b3, just biding my time. Queens, in my half of the board, it's 
kind of aggressively placed, but I didn't really see what his follow-up was. H6 was kind of weird. Maybe he was worried I would play like bishop d2 followed by knight g5 or something. Um, yeah, and then he followed with f5. The idea of f5 is good, I think, which is to knock my pawn off of e4 and try to obtain control of the d5 square for use by one of his pieces. But um, after e5, his sense of danger let him down because this queen is cut off from, a, from retreating now. He can't get back on the h2, b8 diagonal. Yeah, and this just allows bishop d2. So it looks like he has to play queen e4 right away and offer a trade of queens, which I may not want to take him up on because even though um, his e pawns are questionable, I have trouble defending d2 because if knight d or uh, d4 rather because if knight d2 he can take on d4 simultaneously defending his e4 pawn as well. Hmm. So he had to have the the presence of mind to play queen e4 and realize he needs to get his queen out immediately. Sneak it out that way. Bishop d3, queen d5. I can play bishop c4. So if queen takes a5, I take here with check, forking the king and the rook. And if he takes here, I assume bishop takes d8. So white retains an advantage according to the computer, but it's very much a game still. Queen d7, he just retreats, and he's cramped, but he still has a playable position, and he has the d5 square. This bishop will have to find a way to get in the game. But after bishop d5, bishop d2, that queen is gasping for air. Yeah, and bishop takes b3 was the only way to give it some semblance of an escape. Um, I could have played check. queen takes b3 check, but he'll go queen d5. So I thought it was simpler simply to take here, take, take, and we've traded the queens. I'm up a piece for just a pawn, and um, he has difficulty taming my bishop pair too, especially that light square bishop. He's got light square weaknesses. Yeah, now this just accelerated his defeat, but Check. he was going down anyways. He can barely move in the final position. So, okay, um, hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.